Hey, welcome everybody to Geek Camp. I'm Susan Leonardson. Hey. Andrea Pierre. Andrea Pierre. Dan Haney yeah, is joining hey. us again today. And we are going to be talking about uh, building memberships, membership areas, courses, whatever you want to call it. But in ClickFunnels Classic, I keep calling it 1.0, but I it's know. Classic, right? <laughs> classic. Uh, it's classy, last, classic. Our last, yeah, <laughs> classy. <laughs> um, our last Geek Camp, we covered um, what we know so far in 2.0. Of course, the state of ClickFunnels 2.0 right now um, yeah, poses some technical difficulties along the way. But we do not anticipate that happening today because we're going to be working in ClickFunnels 1.0 which means we're we have the most experience there um i think dan you have something to say about that as well later but basically uh you know we've all been working in click funnels classic for years and it is where we've gained our experience it's where we have developed things um out of necessity which we're going to talk about and uh it's we see it being the I'm going to use maybe a little bit of an analogy. This the stable big brother to ClickFunnels 2.0 right now and ClickFunnels 2.0 is kind of the wild re rebel at the moment. Mm -hmm. Um and That's a good we, analogy. <laughs> we definitely um see the 2.0 growing and developing into something that we love and will become our go-to and the thing that we turn to for everything uh involving funnels and uh, possibly CRM, like all the things that they're going to be putting out. We can see the potential of it being our go-to thing. Um, but at the moment, they're in their growing pains. They're trying to launch something that's new. It's not stable. It's having issues. Um, and so we are going to be still using ClickFunnels Classic for a lot of things still. Um, so that's why we're doing this today, because it is our preferred place to be building courses and membership areas because of the stability. But with that said, we have um, it's not this is not going to be just a, oh, here's how to go and put a course into ClickFunnels Classic. This is going to be showing the cool crap that we all do. <laughs> um, thanks to Dan and Andrea's brain, mostly of what sh what should be happening in there. Um, so this is going to be like a deep behind the scenes look at what you could do in ClickFunnels Classic um, from everything from just some basic updates, some basic upgrades to it, to some like really cool developer code stuff. Um, so that's what we have in store for you today. Anything else you guys want to add to that? Andrea? No. I think uh, that's it. I'll yeah, move go ahead, forward here. Okay. All right. Well, let me see. First off, um, I will just say that um, I won't drink the Kool-Aid. I won't call it classic. So <laughs> I'm a ClickFunnels 1.0 guy here. So uh, <laughs> the other thing is I built my first uh, ClickFunnels membership site in 2017. And I'll show you one of my earliest builds. It's actually to this day, one of kind of my coolest builds ever on, on how it works, but I've never got anybody besides the original person I built it for to buy it from me. So it's kind of gone by the wayside, like as you'll see a bunch of others, because what we really come down to at the end is what probably the last eight, 10, 12 uh, membership builds are all of what we refer to as a dashboard model. And it's all built in 1.0 and it's built in 1.0 because of the way what makes it possible is the way that the information is loaded in 1.0 versus 2.0. 2.0, every single lesson in there is its own individual page. Whereas in 1.0, when you go to the membership area, all of the content, no matter what, is loaded simultaneously. So even if so, if uh, content is restricted, that content is not loaded on the page. So nobody can ever have access to it. But if it's not restricted, all of it's loaded simultaneously. And because of that, we can very easily access it and the page never has to reload. So maybe it takes a couple seconds to load the first time out of the box, but after that, you're done. And because of that, we can do all kinds of cool graphics and animations. And there's stuff that we haven't even gone into yet in the world of gamification and uh, what do you call it? Uh, your own journey, doing picking your own journey. What do you call that thing, Andrea? Your um, own adventure. 
or choose your own adventure, you know, stuff like mm -hmm. that. There's absolutely no reason why that cannot be easily done in 1.0. And I'll show you some stuff that I've made that starts to get there, but we've, we've never even gone there yet. And I know that we can. Um, so let me share my screen. Um, let me see. What do I got to do to share? Present. There we go. And we got to share the screen. Share the screen. It's only like 12 clicks to get there. <laughs> and are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Okay. All right. Well, probably um, for the purposes of doing this, I should probably cover. Yeah, just cover us up. You don't need to yeah. see us. <laughs> no, I mean, but it'd be nice to see you. But the problem is, if I do, then by the time we're done, there's two two sets of uh, videos yeah. uh, next that's to what it. everybody is so, seeing is two sets yeah. of us. <laughs> because that's because there will still be some over here, and I'll leave my little self down there at the bottom just so I can see myself talking. Because I'm so <laughs> um, okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is most everybody who's watching this has probably built out a 1.0 membership site in the past, but we're going to walk through it very, very quickly just because it is so flipping easy just to build the basics of it. And then we're going to look at very early on, we immediately, I started coming up with a wish list of my own. Andrea had a big, huge wish list. And so over the years, um, a lot of extra things have been built into what is really the very basic membership site itself. And then, like I said, we'll get into some of the really super duper cool over the top stuff. So the very first thing you want to do is you want to just come in here and add a new step. So if you created a new funnel or anything, and of course I have I'm taking you off screen, go ahead and log in, Dan. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was in here all morning. She knows, and she knows you, Dan. <laughs> decided to log me out as soon as I go live. Okay. Let's try this again. <clears throat> Okay, let me see. Add a new step. There we go. Okay, sure. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm back okay. live. Yeah. Okay. So I clicked on add a new step, <laughs> and I'm just going to just put in the word here, demo for right now. So let's say this is going to be our demo access page. And the only reason I'm showing you this is because the very most important thing of picking and creating your step originally is you got to make sure you come up here to where it says membership, and you got to choose either an access page or an area page. So one or the other, because basically all the elements we're going to use, at least the important elements, are all uh, based upon the proper page type here. So make sure you grab access or area and then grab any one of your templates. And I'm just going to grab any one because I'm going to delete this as soon as I'm done because I already have the two and what I called here my very basic members area. And now we're just going to delete this funnel step by clicking there. And there we go. So now we're going to go into the access page. In the access page, there is basically one thing that you have to set up. You can set all kinds of crazy backgrounds on here and colors and all that kind of stuff, but there's only one element. So we'll go in here, we'll put in our width, we'll put in our column, and then we got our singular element that we can put in here. Like again, so you can put in images, you can put in headlines, you can put in whatever you want, make this look like whatever you want. I'll show you one later where I turned it actually into essentially an opt-in page. Uh, but that is it. This is the entirety of what you have to do to set up an access page in 1.0. Now you can come in here and you can say, okay, I'm going to go SEO metadata, but okay, you can change the, the, the SEO. I don't even know if this is a title or what it is. It just says SEO metadata. It's probably the meta title right here. You can change that, but you can't change the description. You can't change the images. You can't change anything else in here regarding the metadata. And that becomes a problem. And I'll show you what causes, what, what, what that problem looks like and how to fix it here in a little bit. But otherwise, here's an access page. So we can click on save and we're done creating our access page. Obviously you want to prettify it yourself, but that's the basics of it. And so the same thing with the members area here is you'll come in and first let's just go into the editor itself. So we'll open up a new tab for the editor. Then we'll come back and look at the lessons here in a minute. Same thing with this here. We're going to put in a section and then generally you put in a two column row. And generally speaking, again, people put in the navigation element on the left. You can put in the content on the right. And you can put in that search element if you want to, but that search element doesn't work. So don't bother. 
So don't even click on it. Leave it off your page. It like one leave out of it 10 off. times it kind of sort off. of works sometimes. Yeah, I found like one case where it worked one time for me. That's it. Uh, you know, sure, you can come in here. You can put a you can put a header up above here. Let's just uh, grab this uh, grab this section here. We'll put it up top. We'll put in a two column row, and we can put a, an image over here to the left for a, for an icon of some sort. You can put a button over here for a logout button. But again, ain't a whole lot else you can do on here. Straight out of the box color you know images in the background colorize things move things around you can maybe make this wider you can make it narrower you can change the width of the columns but otherwise this is pretty much the entirety of a of what it takes to build an area page inside of click funnels 1.0 and that's why can i we think do, can we do a quick moment for a sad face dan on that <laughs> just as quick a quick moment because I think, and I know you're building, and so hopefully this doesn't ruin your build, but no, my sad face on this is that this is why so many people have no idea what they actually have in front of them and the power that is behind them right now, right? Because what you just shared was at best underwhelming. And so if I get into like a Kajabi or a Thinkific or a Teachable or a Wix or a Squarespace or a whatever, 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 right? Like Kartra, right? It's all of a sudden, it's got templates and it looks good and it's formatted, right? And so they think that it is more powerful it, versus what you just went through, which would be the initial experience for somebody. And they're like, oh, ClickFunnels doesn't do memberships. Like they don't do courses, right? That is unfortunately, I think what happens to like 99% of the people. Um, and so anyway, just wanted to take a moment little bit of a seed plant there, but sad face, because that's probably what a lot of people fall victim to when they think about membership 1.0. Well, and here's the thing. You went exactly where I was going. No, oh, I'm so <laughs> sorry, Dan. I'm so sorry. No, Do it. no, you, you, you articulated it much better than I could have, because that's where people think. I mean, even Russell I was heard him one day. He's like, oh, finally, we got a membership site builder, even though they call it courses in 2.0 for some reason. But um, the uh, and it's just you guys don't they didn't understand the power of what they created here. And is what I alluded to earlier is that all of the content loads simultaneously. And so that's what you really see here on this page is is the power of this thing because so we got our section here and we can clone this and make a couple more lessons here if we want we can add a section down here at the bottom now again i'm assuming that everybody has some experience uh with uh <coughs> 2.0 um so we'll just call this second section here and so we just added a new section and now we can add a new lesson and we're going to say we want to add that lesson to our second section and we'll call this here lesson 2.1 and we can add it in there we can clone it a couple of times and in each one of these lessons you can come into oops that's not what i wanted to do quite yet let me bounce out of there you can come into each one of these lessons and you have a choice you can have like two standard uh templates uh, i guess you can only do that when you add one so let me add a new one so we come in here, we got our page template, we got a resource list or a video lesson. I frankly, besides testing purposes, I don't think I've ever used either of these. I just create myself a blank template and um, and and go, go as it is. And then uh, let's just real quickly go into the editor because the editor is just like any other editor. Okay, here's one actually put in a one of the, the blank templates itself. And so you can work in here just like you would anywhere else in the editor. And in fact, in this case here, we're just going to delete everything out. We'll delete all that out. And then I'm going to say I want to put in a section and I'm going to say my sections and I'm just going to say a lesson section. So I created this lesson section for the next part of the presentation. And all it is, it's a headline and a video. So you come in here, you put in, you drop in your, your, your link, in this case, to YouTube. And now you have a video on inside of your lesson. And we can come out and now we got all of our lessons and we got all of our sections. And again, you're saying, okay, well, how is this different than anything else? And again, what I keep saying is, is because everything is on the page simultaneously. So at any time I can say, let's say I'm in lesson number one here, 
I can say, okay, well, let's jump down here to this lesson number three down here at the bottom. With one click, without leaving the page, without any time at all, it goes from this lesson to this lesson, and we don't have to go anywhere. And the best part about it is I don't have to make two pages then that look exactly the same because I never left the first page in the first place. All I did was swap out the data that's showing within a given box on the page, and that would be the content element on the page. That's the only thing that changes here. So, I mean, if you guys want to interrupt at any point, just please go ahead. Um, good. I think that's an important note because that is not how 2.0 works. Just everything is on, while they are using templates and they are using dynamically inputted content into those template pages, it's still every one of them is assigned their own path. Every URL is different. So it's essentially loading a new page every time you navigate to any lesson. Yeah, yeah, it is loading a new page every time you mm -hmm. go from lesson to lesson. And you're right, they have templates and they have the dynamic slots and all that. But again, in my mind and my experience with it so far is building each one of those templates and then inputting every one of the lessons is much harder work and much more time consuming than it is to just pop into here, build out the shell, the structure of what you want it to look like, and then just come in and edit every single one of the lessons right here on the same page without ever again having to leave, go anywhere else, do anything else. And again, in here, you can move things around just like you can in, in 2.0. So you can move lessons around within a section. You can move the sections around so you can reorder them. And then if you wanna move this lesson right here into this first section, that takes a little bit more, that takes an extra click. You just come up here and you say, I wanna put that in the first section. And now it's moved up there, except we need to reload the page just so we can see that it had moved because it just doesn't populate properly sometimes and that's okay. So, so everything is good to go in here. And then they got another thing that's cool, like I said earlier, is that you can restrict each of these bits of content. And again, you can do that in 2.0 and probably every other membership site builder. And so we can come in here and we can say, how do we want to restrict this content? And we can restrict it either by a product that is purchased. So we can go through here and find the product that they purchased. And we can say, okay, product number four right here, or we can do it by tag. And we'd have to type in whatever the name of our tag is and then click on the blue. And then this section will now be restricted. And restricted means then whoever the member is who comes in and is in here viewing the content, if they didn't have that product or that tag set in their contact profile, then um, they would not see this content because, like I said, it knows, it's smart enough to know, don't load that content onto the page at all. So you won't see it in the navigation and you definitely won't see it in the content area because there's nowhere to click on it in the, in the navigation to make it show up anyway, but it's, it's not there at all. And then the next thing we have on that uh, is the Wasabi OTO that we can add on top of that which again, I'll show you that uh, another example of that in a minute here, but we can do the Wasabi OTO and we can say, okay, if they don't have this tag set, we want to send them to an OTO page, an upgrade page where they can go and purchase this product. So they would see this thing, they would click on it, go there, purchase the product, come back in. When they come back in, log back into their account, then the product will be available. That content will then be available for them. So it essentially has all the same bells and whistles as you're going to find in 2.0. You can add people. I'm sorry. Like, what? I think what you just went through, I think, Dan, what you just went through, I think it's better in 1.0 right now because we have this weird, like, we can't yet control at these multiple levels of access. You know what I mean? So like right now in 1.0, we can control based on product. We can control based on tag and we can get really sophisticated with that. But, and we can do it in the same, in the same membership area, right? Like where like one section is based on a tag and another section is based on a product purchase. Like this to me provides us a ton of flexibility. We don't see that in 2.0 yet. We see, we see the tea leaves that it's going to be there, but it's not there yet. And so right now I think 1.0 access control is far more powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's, 
Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, and to add another layer, right? Like, and I know we've had a million of these conversations when we think about visibility, it's also the upsell potential. So it's like, do I show it? Do I not show it? Do I show it based on tag or product? And there's a lot of reasons why one or the other, right? And do I show it to non-buyers, right? Do I provide a non-buyer upsell path or not? Again, like all of those options are available to us in 1.0. Like, that's not true in 2.0 right now. Right. And um, yeah, so like I said, the, with the Wasabi OTO there, I will show them the out of the box way that is done in click funnels. But I will also tell you that I got like 10, 10 improvements on how to do that out of the box as far as how, how you view it and how you then send them on the upsell path, even to the point where with the Wasabi OTO, I found a way to actually be able to put an order form directly inside of a membership area so they never have to leave. If they, have, they click on something that's restricted content that is restricted using the Wasabi OTO, when they click on it, the order form actually just appears right on the page. They don't have to go anywhere. Amazing. They can right there onto the sales page, never left. It's totally 100% seamless. So this is it straight out of the box. I guess I can preview uh, wait, let me see here. I got to go into, no, I'll just click on my little handy dandy bookmark that I made here and we will preview this page. Which and, everybody should be asking Dan to sell his bookmarklets. <laughs> um, hey, you should ask me to sell my bookmarklets. They are available for sale. I do. I do have a few I have to fix, um, that I really came up with a great improvement on the other day. But so here's, here's the membership area that we just built. And because I'm logged in as the and I'm in preview mode, this will not show the Wasabi OTO. We'll show you that here in a minute, um, how that looks um, if, if you're not logged in and you don't have access to it. But otherwise, here is basic out of the box, what it looks like. And so if I click on one, it goes from one lesson to the next. There was nothing apparently in this lesson. And uh, so it's not much of a dramatic demonstration as Russell and Steve would talk about, but you just go from one to the next. But, uh, you know, again, just straight out of the box, the beauty is we never left this page. So we didn't have to build out. I mean, we built out essentially, I guess, one template. And then, I mean, when you, when you do the, when you build out the lessons themselves, when you're in here building out this lesson, that is what appears right here. So everything else around it, we build inside of the editor and then this is here. Now, of course, with the navigation, we can make the navigation look like however we want using a little bit of CSS. We can colorize things. One thing I did forget to do for today's demonstration was where, where the active lesson is. So here's our active lesson. And right now it's just got a little bit of a, a border along the left-hand side and the background slightly different color, but we can obviously make that look like whatever we want. Same thing with hover. You see here as I hover, it gets the border on the left-hand side, but again, a slight change to the CSS and we can uh, make that look like whatever we want. And again, we'll show you some examples of that in a minute. So here was the basic one, had all kinds of issues. And so Andrea came up with a whole list of things and like i said i came up with a list of things and we've been building these out um well basically for me since 2017. so um andrea did you want to go through the uh, some of the yeah. things that you looking for yeah um okay so i'm gonna stop and share gonna do... for a minute here i'm gonna stop my share for a minute here just to make sure i'm logged into um did i stop sharing yeah, yeah. okay no worries. And Dan, just to make sure, so I'm, I'm going to open up Sabos first and then P2P, or do you want me to wait on that and just go through the list? Um, yeah, just go, I mean, just go through the list of the basic stuff okay. that you, you, you know, you always tell me, oh, I got this list of like seven things that I, I, I think we need about. a visual just to help people with that. So I'm just going to drill into one. Um, give me one second. And just to, uh, I'll do while you're getting that. So what we're talking about is <clears throat> out of the box. It ClickFunnels 1.0 membership areas were they they did the job they were they housed your content they displayed back the content, but when we Love get that. more into user experience and the customer experience of actually like consuming the content and um, and navigating through like the, just from one lesson to the next lesson and and like there was there's improvements to be made and so what Andrea is about to go through are 
basically the things that became the the standard in all of our builds of we have to have like bare minimum the build has to include these things for it to pass our standards and be given to the client yeah you ready <laughs> yes yes um um okay uh, so can you guys see my screen yeah. okay um cool. now we can <laughs> All right. Awesome. Um, okay. So uh, this is, um, we're going to go deeper into the other areas of this, but some of the things that were really annoying in the 1.0 from a user experience standpoint is the navigation. So we know that like opening and closing these, uh, you know, it worked, right? But then what would happen is somebody would open it, check out what's in there, then they'd open this, check out what's in there. And then like for here, right, there's a really long list. So then they would open this, then they would open this, then they'd open this and they could see everything, right? So what would end up happening is that if this gets long enough, and I'm just going to open up a bunch of these, right? So this screen would go up with it. And so I basically would click on this, right? And nothing would happen, especially on mobile. So they'd click on it. They click on it. They'd be like, nothing's happening. I'm clicking on it. And I don't see anything. Because what they didn't understand is that the content loaded below the screen on mobile. And it loaded over on the right-hand side here above where they could see. So it was this really bad user experience problem where they're like, I'm clicking on it, it's broke, but it's just because it was completely non-responsive to when I click on this, take me to the content that doesn't exist in 1.0. So that was problem number one. Problem number two is that when I click on this, I only want this. I'm telling the, like, I'm telling the computer, I want this content. So all of my opens up here are no longer relevant. I just want the thing I clicked on. So all, but yet all of these would stay expanded. And so it was really confusing as to like, where am I? Second thing on where am I? Good way finding. I always know where I've been, where I'm at, where I'm going. So when I would click on this, nothing would be different visibly about this thing. So I had no idea what I was actually clicked on. So what we call the active member nav, like nothing was apparent of like, what section am I in? What lesson am I in? I have no idea, right? And sometimes it has this like weird little thing over to the left, but no one could really see that. And so that was like problem number three, right? These were massive problems. Problem number four, and it's not in this build, and Dan, you might have another one, is like when I finished a lesson, I didn't know where to go. I was like stuck. I'm like, okay, I listened to the video and I watched the stuff. Now what? So there's this next previous concept that Dan has that we now, you know, we're using. Um, then there's also this issue of on mobile, the like navigation is on top and the contents on bottom. And it's really clunky on how to navigate that. So it's navigating the mobile experience better. Um, the last thing that I will say is set so scroll through content. What, I feel like I'm missing one, Dan. Um, well, one of the things you said about, about a scrolling up when on the right hand side of your content is long enough and you're like mm -hmm. scrolled way down on the screen, not only yeah. does the, um, the sidebar, the navigation collapse also on the right hand side, it scrolls back up to the top. So you always end up with the content at the top with the navigation collapsed and with the active lesson always being very much highlighted. So you know exactly where you are. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yeah. So those were just some of the things. Um, oh, and then there was one other thing. And that is when we were trying to help people like with password for its issues or something like that. Right. Th they didn't have like a log out. <laughs> like it wasn't just like a like, how do we get out of this thing so I can troubleshoot? So it was just the simple adding a log out feature. That was another one. That was a big one. Um, we also had a whole host of issues on the access page. So when I first started launching just with 1.0, I still remember it was the most nightmare of experience. It was a summit, which if anybody has done a summit, summits are high pressure. They're very time intensive and they're very time specific, like doors open at nine, right? So it was for um, a, a community that the average population was 60 plus. So they were also not very tech savvy. Um, a lot of them, uh, and they, um, and so there's this time pressure and it was just like 1.0 out of the box. So we had like 400 people in the summit and we had 200 help tickets on people not being able to create an account. 
um, or get in and log in because 1.0 out of the box on the access page is, and what I mean by that is the access page where they like, you have to create an account. So you have this weird secret URL thing, and then you have to like log in with your regular login and trying to manage between like, first you use this link, then you use that link is a nightmare. So for my 400 people, God love them, that came in, you know what I mean? They were using the secret and they already had a login or they were using the login, but they hadn't created an account yet. And so there was this huge problem of like, I don't know. And so another one of the fixes that Dan did that I'll talk about is what's called the open front end. So that no longer, I always see like not a member, sign up here or already a member, go here. And so that reduced our help tickets on the next round of that group or that summit for by 95%. So we went from 200 tickets to 10 tickets. So it was huge. So anyway, those are just some of the issues with 1.0 <laughs> that I was like, you know, yes, in terms of like Kajabi and Thinkific and Kartra, like these are showstoppers to me from a user experience standpoint. So Dan Havey, how do we fix it? And Dan will illuminate the amazingness that he brought to our world. Elucidate or something. Um, the, the one thing that you did forget on the access page is the error handling too. Oh, uh, right. Uh, yes. Okay. So did I have, did I create an account? I don't know. I forget, but I think I created an account. This is not a real account. They don't, they didn't actually ever create an account, but they don't remember. So they're going to come in and they're going to try it. Old, and then they're right? come here. What saying? What's that? Because they're, they're old and they have gray hair. Is that what you're <laughs> right. saying? Oh no, I did create an account. Great. But yeah. let's say that I created an account and I don't have a password. <laughs> so let's do this. Make, make on this really fake one this time. Right. I know this one's really fake. Okay. So I think I created an account. Maybe I created an account. I don't remember if I created an account. Boom. Error handling. There's no account with this email. You should probably create an account. Awesome. So then boom, it takes me right there to create an account. And it also is like, if it's a wrong password, hey, that's the wrong password. So it handles, there's four different scenarios and it handles all of the different errors. Well, and there's one other thing I see on the Sabo page here that I kind of forgot about that I probably should add into the template is the ability to put in other fields. Because as you have mm -hmm. on there, you got the full name field right on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to make myself so, note yeah. on that. A game because, changer. Yeah. There, a lot of people ask for that all the time because otherwise all you get is an email address and their password is stored and, and it, yeah, it's really nice sometimes to actually have somebody's full name in the contact database when you try to figure out who the heck they are. <laughs> Especially if you're yeah. using as a lead gen technique. Well, yeah. Which we are in his case. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and I do have one example of using it as a lead gen. And so I'll have to make myself a note here to to do that. But also I did forget about one thing in that original uh, basic template that I built. So uh, if you guys are ready, I will share my screen again. And we will share the screen. I said it's like a 10 click process to get this thing done. Okay. Are you okay? We should be sharing yeah. my screen now. All right. Okay. So here is that that very, very basic membership area that I built. And let me get this over us so we don't have to see twice. Um, okay. So here's a very basic thing. But what happens now is when we go to mobile. What happens is two things is one is you get this clunky little thing up here at the top and that's easy enough. You just say, you know, whatever the, um, oh, here it is right there anyway, was the uh, L membership nav mo mobile toggle in CSS. You just tell it to display none and then you won't see it on the page anymore. But where the real problem comes in is you got your, your um, navigation up here at the top and you got your video down here at the bottom. Now, for me, I always like to have the content at the top of the page on mobile or wherever else. And I we want to scroll up to that content every time we click on a lesson. So what I did originally years ago is um, I came in here and we'll, let's just come in and well, let's do it down here at the bottom. We will add a new row. We will put that up to the top. We will clone this element because in 1.0, you can have two or more different content areas on a page, but you can only have one navigation element on a page. So what we're going to do here is we're going to say that on 
on mobile, we want this content showing, which will then put it above the navigation. And on desktop, we want this content showing. So we're going to come into this element. We're going to say we want this one desktop only. And we're going to say for this one up here, we want this row to be mobile only. So now you see we're going to have our content above our lessons down here at the bottom. So let us save that and we will take a look at how that changes it. Let's uh, get out of that mode. And so here it is still the same in desktop mode. And then when we go into mobile view, now our content is above and <coughs> our, um, our navigation is below. And then again, when we start adding in some of the bells and whistles, we would click on a lesson here. When we clicked on the lesson, it actually made, I don't know why it just made that disappear. <laughs> it shouldn't have. Um, but, you don't have a video on that lesson, I don't think. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. It did not disappear. <laughs> it, uh, it's just not there. There you go. Okay. Yeah, there was no content in there. Yeah. Um, so, so that's exactly how it was. And so this was a good solution for a very long time that we would put this down here at the bottom. Then you would click on it. It would collapse like Andrea had just showed you. It would scroll to the top so that basically it would be sitting on the page so that like right here would be the top of the screen. So all you would see is like the lesson title and the video below it. And then if you wanted to go to the next lesson, you would just scroll down on the page or we had you know, previous next buttons in here as well, and you can navigate that way. Well, how I built out the one for this template is actually a little bit different. And um, if you guys are ready, I will jump into it, starting with a page that I don't know if I've ever, I think I've shown you guys this here before, but maybe not. So let's start with, actually I need to, I need to let me close that and here, we'll get back out of here. Because one of the things that always happens with a, uh, so you want to send somebody to your membership site. You want to send somebody to the access page of your membership site. And you want to send it to them over Facebook. Or you want to put a post in Facebook telling oh, people, oh, hey, one. go to this page. What does the social media look like for that? Well, I'll show you exactly what it looks like. It looks like this right here. And... That's what it looks like because as we showed you, there's no ability to be able to put in any SEO metadata. Well, what I want it to look like is more like this. So here is a social media post that has nothing more than the link to the page and also has the, uh, this is what it would look like as a comment down here at the bottom. Obviously this looks much better than this clunky thing here that doesn't look like anything at all. So this looks like actual social media link. And so how was I able to do that? Well, I will tell you in a minute here, once I find my page again, is I put in a, what I usually call like a faux access page or something prior to it. So now in this case here, what I did is I have a domain that I set up in my domains and I have the default in the 404 page all pointing straight towards this root domain access page. On this root domain access page, so I can just type in the funnelcodesecrets.com and it will take me to this page. Or I can go to social media and put in funnelcodesecrets.com and it will show me the social media image that I want to see. And it'll display it properly because inside of this page right here, we did a couple of things. And the biggest thing is Besides putting in the social media stuff, we can go in here, we can see that. I put in all the social media stuff on this page. But what we also did is, I think, five different ways I have this thing redirecting. So that when somebody lands on this page, and actually this should be hidden. I don't know why that is showing. This row should be hidden here. Um, either way, it doesn't matter. This row should be hidden so you wouldn't see this. So when you actually come in here, it's going to bypass this page because it's going to land on this page for a split second it's going to bypass it and then it's going to go to the access page and because of that it will pick up the seo from this page even though it's forwarding you to the next page so i use this all the time as a trick and so um let's just go here to funnel code secrets and when you see it 
get the image there in the background. That's actually the image from that faux page. Then the other page loads right over the top of it because it's the same background image. It's seamless. And then it drops you right in here. Same kind of trick you can use if you're going directly from a link to an affiliate's sales page is make the background of your affiliate page look like the page is going to land on. So not, I mean, you don't have to put everything on there, but if they got, you know, three quarters of the top up here is black and a quarter down here at the bottom is white, make yours look like that. So it looks like the page is loading and then boom, theirs comes in right over the top of it. And people are, are they don't know that they just got redirected. So that's been a little trick I've been using for years to do that kind of stuff. And uh, you guys still here? You're not asleep? Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. really smart, Dan. I never no realized that you did that. Yeah. The problem is I can't see you guys. So I can't see if you're still awake or not. You could you could have gone <laughs> and had lunch. I wouldn't know. Uh, <laughs> so let me see. I got to go figure out where I am here. I got so many tabs open. Yes. Leave the page. Okay. So that is the, the faux access page there. Then we get to the regular old access page. And in here, I should have one open. So here's our regular access page. And let me reload this page again. And uh, so I just have a little bit of an animation here where it just kind of comes flying in from the background. Um, it's just a, a simple um, key, um, what they call it, a keyframe is, is all that is. And then I would type in, start typing in an email address here, but I will show you all of my email addresses because it will drop down. Mm, so okay, I, I took it off the yeah. screen. But what I was going to say is, well, okay, okay, well, okay. Let me. If you uh, want to. Yeah, let me let me just do this. Um, okay, what I'm going to do here when I tell you to share it again? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, share the screen again. Okay, so I did essentially what Andrea did before. I tried to log in with a bad email address, one where mm -hmm. there was not an account yet. And so, again, it gives me this big warning message that says uh, there's no account. You can create an account. Um, and then if we if it was the opposite, it would give you the opposite message. If you if you already had an existing account and you were trying to create a new account, it would pick up that as an error message as well, and it would display it on the screen. Normally with ClickFunnels, you get this little punky little code over here on the left-hand side, which does still show on here for a second or so, but then all the rest of this populates in over the top of it. And if I click that off, or if I click the button on there, then it would take me to where I could go in order to log in. But then also down here, I don't think Andrea showed this, but if you need to create an account, you can just click that right there. And that email address is just fine, Susan. Um, okay. <laughs> I was Susan, quick, you are so good. You're fingers. so good. <laughs> if, somebody, if somebody wants to email me at dantest at gmail.com. <laughs> I can't uh, even uh, see. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah. that's not one of my good ones. Um, so the um, so whatever I was saying is so basically like uh, like Andrea said we call this our open front end so that people can just go back and forth and then of course you can got your forgot your password here and and again you can just flip back and forth between all of these different states of the the login element is essentially what it is is there's essentially with this login element there's actually three forms inside of it. And all I'm saying here is hide and show those forms based upon which one of the buttons I click. And then again, when that error message gets thrown, then show us the proper message. All that's built right into the pop-up. And then also <coughs> um, figure out which one of the forms to show based upon which error message was thrown. And so that's pretty much it, I think, for the extra stuff on the members area page. In fact, let me look here, Aaron, Henry, can I, yeah, that was pretty much, we showed the SEO metadata stuff. Okay, so now let's go into the members area in here. And we had already looked at um, how to set up a lesson, how to set up the sections, and then also how to set a restricted item. And in here, I do have one that is restricted by this tag. And then we also have the Wasabi OTO set on it. So you'll see that. And then again, just a little refresher again for everybody. There are two different URLs up here. And when you give somebody this login URL, they will see 
this form right here where the email and the password are what show on the page. And if we give them the, the super secret signup URL, which is the same as this one over here on the left, it's just got a bunch of numbers appended to the end of it. If you give them this one, that will show them the registration page. So if you want somebody, so the very, basically how I look at it is this. First off, I always use the open front end. I wrote the code for this in probably 2017. And, um, but when somebody first purchases your course, so you send them the thank you email, something like that, send them the registration link. Every other time after that, always just send them the login link. Or in the case of this here, I could just send them to funnelcodesecrets.com and it will redirect to this page and show them just this link here because I'm telling that when, when I do the forward on the faux page, when I do the forward, I tell it to send it to here to the login link, not to the registration link. Mm -hmm. But then again, if somebody were to land here, they would just click here, create an account. Now you're saying to yourself, Oh my God, that means that anybody and their brother can create an account and get in here. Well, as I said before, because of how the restricted content works, this restricted content does not load on the page at all. There is no way to get to this. It doesn't exist essentially. But in fact, it doesn't. Now I think about it, it does not exist on the internet until this page loads. Whereas in 2.0, every single one of those pages still exists somewhere. This mm -hmm. content doesn't exist until it's loaded onto this page. Now, mm -hmm. does that make the security any better or worse? Eh, probably not, depending on how they, how they restrict the access to those lesson pages in 2.0. Um, so I really don't know about that one for sure. But either way, um, so that is what we have here. And then we can go into the editor for this page. Was there anything else I needed to talk about here? No, I think that's good. Okay, I beat that horse enough. <laughs> you did, yeah. Okay, so here is now our, our page, our area page. And you're looking at this and going, okay, what did you do in here? And this was the thing I have not shown even Susan and Andrea yet because I just built this last night and because I wanted to put in my previous next. Now I will tell you right now that Jamie Smith also has previous next code. This is not mm -hmm. his code. This is code I actually wrote myself in 2017 before I ever even knew who Jamie Smith was. And then I saw and he wrote it. It's like, wow, that's cool. And there's a really important differentiator between you and Jamie Smith's code besides the code itself, right? And that is, I'm going to jump to the chase. Previous and next is great. If I'm in a section and I get, to, you know, I'm in a lesson, I get to the end of the lesson, I go to the next. Yay. And then I go to the next and then I go next. Okay. But let's say I'm at the very bottom lesson and the next section is a locked section. With Jamie's code, it will allow me to get into a locked section versus with Dan's, it does a check to say, well, do I even have access to that next thing? That's a big differentiation. Yeah. Very <laughs> that look is the look of like, I don't know if I have that in the current code base that I'm going to give them. <laughs> uh, no, I, no, I have all the same code in there. It's just, uh, I, I guess I never looked at, I, I got to be honest, I've never loaded Jamie's code in anything. I've looked at what his code was after I found out he had it and I had already written it. And it, you compare the two of them side to side, they don't look anything alike, which is really one of the things that, you know, that was one of my first things where it was a big learning experience for me. It's like, wow. Two people can write the code to do exactly the same thing, and it doesn't look at all alike. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought that was kind of kind of cool learning experience. Um, mm -hmm. But so so we got the previous next in here. <laughs> so what I want to do is because this here is a separate row. What I want to do is I want to take this row and I want to put it on top of this row because what you see here is this is actually three rows side by each, and this is in ClickFunnels 1.0, not classic uh, 1.0. And so how is it that I got these three rows side by each like this? Well, I used flex, just like you can use in 2.0 as a built-in element. I did it here with a little bit of CSS code. And in fact, I'll show everybody the CSS code. And here's another cool bookmark that if uh, anybody's interested is you can come in here and you can 
change the size, you can do the exact same thing with a tracking code where you can move it around on the screen, you can resize it, you can do anything you want. And uh, it makes it a lot easier to work on the screen. And my latest fix that I have to still put in here is, is you see how small it opens up? I you know, like, I got tired of that because mm -hmm. every time I'd have to like open it up and make it bigger. So I was like, <laughs> well, gee, why don't I just make it this big to start with? So I got I to gotta build that fix in there. But so here you got a couple places here where I'm using a display flex right there, display flex right here. Well, in fact, I got it in at least three places here. And then we got a little mobile queries down here, flex direction. Um, so this is, this is the entirety of the CSS that makes up this page. There's a lot more JavaScript than there is CSS. But if you guys are ready, let's take a look at the live page. And I got a logout button here. And the one thing about this logout button is there's special code inside the logout button that when it goes back to the... Uh, when it goes back to the access page, it brings that code along to let it know to remove any any error codes. Because what I found when I was doing the thing and fixing the error codes is that those error codes pers persist. So if you had an error error code before you came into the membership area, that code persists. And if I sent it back, it would automatically like pop the code or pop the warning messages back up. So I had to put some code in here to turn that thing off and get it to stop. Um, so let me see here. Do I have a page open? Okay. So here is the, um, let me just reload the page and hopefully it won't log me out. And it logged me out. <laughs> All right, Susan, stop my share. It's hiding. <laughs> okay. And now I'm logged back in. Okay, there we go. Okay, so here is the final result. And there are a couple of things that I um, have to make sure I don't forget. I do have them on my list here. So at the end, I will make sure I walk through everything because there's a couple of hidden things in here that I haven't told you about yet. And um, so here, um, as Andrea said, now with the normal way that ClickFunnels works is when I were to, do I still have that other one open? I don't think I do. Um, normally, when you click on this header, it just disappears. It doesn't slide up slowly and nicely like this. So I, I like the fact that we we got it so it can slide nicely like that. And then so we can open up all of these like uh, she had said. And now let's scroll down to the bottom. And so now let's say we want to click on a lesson. And when we click on this lesson, it's not only going to close up the sidebar, it's also going to scroll us back up to the top of the page. So we'll click on there and it scrolls us to the top of the page. Now, I don't have it going all the way to the top of the page. I just have it going to the top of this content section. You could have it go all the way to the top of the page if you wanted to. I just figure I want to get my content as close to the top of the page as possible. Now, let's say here we're in lesson number 2.5. And so we can do previous and just watch over here because all my videos and stuff are exactly the same. This is just for obviously to show off today. Um, what you're going to see here is this climbs up. And this is where I said I forgot to put in, like you're going to see in a lot of examples, um, forgot to put in the highlights of this being highlighted and really showing itself off. Uh, but so we just click previous, previous, previous. But then when we do our next, what we're going to do, we're on 2.5 here now. If I click it again, I'm going to go to 3.1. And it jumps to the next lesson. And it moved everything up as well. So... Um, that's pretty nice. Also, I do need to put in the code to remove that check mark because it does absolutely nothing. Um, check it just mark. Just teases us with amazingness. Oh, that's yeah. actually a good. Um, so, for those of you who uh, with 1.0, you may not know. So, they do have this thing called progress tracking, where then they basically put a check mark if you've done that lesson. And the idea is that, like, I remember if I've done that lesson, I will tell you that that check mark is a 100% worthless. It basically, the logic behind it is if the page loads for more than one second, then put check mark, right? Is like the out of the box algorithm, which that is, doesn't tell us anything. Then if you want to get a little bit more com complicated, you do have the ability to say, if they do a certain percentage or if they stay on it for a particular amount, you can track progress. But again, that is so arbitrary in terms of like, I could step away for a second and then come back and all of a sudden it's completed. So it, they, there really is no concept in 1.0 truly of progress tracking. Yeah. And here's where you could set that. So you could say, 
okay, um, must must spend on a lesson. Okay, the required time must spend on a lesson to consider completed in seconds. So if I put in 100 seconds here, after 100 seconds, then it'll give me the check mark. I mean, again, what, mm -hmm. what does that mean? It doesn't really mean anything. And I guess two other things we forgot to mention in here in the lessons is you can put in a drip delay here for a number of days until the content becomes available. And again, same thing here as if it were restricted or if it were drip delayed or if it's date released, it will not load onto the page until the person has access to it. So this is something about show. drip delay though. <laughs> Dan and I would have raging debates initially. I think he's come to my dark side, but I think drip delay is <laughs> worthless. And Never. the reason is because what is the initiation of the drip? It's when the account is created. So I buy the product, I get excited, they take me to the login, I create my account, I get busy, I'm gonna do it this weekend. My drip has started. So the drip has begun the second that I create the account. So I think that the trigger event that starts the drip in 1.0 is unintelligent out of the box. And so again, it doesn't accomplish, what do we, what do, we do a drip for? Two reasons, one, we wanna make sure that they are actually consuming the content and we reduce overwhelm Two, we want to make sure that we're controlling like if we're on a payment plan right or something like that that it's like we're not giving away the farm all right up front and they actually have to like work their way through it as they're making their payment plan so those are the two reasons that i've heard for drip um but but those aren't accomplished right in the current trigger event with drip well and so then we also have a release date down here which is andrea's yeah. preference but I would say the, a good case for using the drip delay, though, is if you are using a challenge and you have a cohort of people who are all going through simultaneously. So on Monday, the 1st of January, we're all going to start. And then on day one, everybody's going to get this content. And day two, everybody's going to get the next content and on and on. That's, that's a good use. That for would the drip be the delay. release date, though, right, Dan? Well, you could do release date too, or you could, I mean, if everybody's starting at exactly the same time. Right. If uh, you can control that trigger event, you're totally right. Yeah. Yeah. Then drip would work just fine. Otherwise, mm -hmm. otherwise, yeah, you're right. Um, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's one of these things where you're expecting everybody to actually show up every day and go through it, which of course I think a lot of times is unrealistic because that's just not life. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so I just wanted to bounce back in there since you were talking about that and show those items. So where were we over here? Um, <laughs> where were we over here? I okay, know, so you we... had just showed off previous next and you started talking about the check mark, which led us to the progress track. Oh, the check mark <laughs> there because, yeah, I just happened to see it on the screen. And um, so, so like I said, you saw how everything uh, collapses back up. You saw it roll to the top. You see the previous next. I'm just kind of looking at my list here. And then, um, so yeah, I forgot to do the highlight, the active lesson. And again, um, up here, you click on the log out. That'll take you right back to the, uh, to the access page as well. And then um, let me just show you, I'm going to show you the, the Wasabi OTO here. So now this Wasabi OTO, how it works is Normally, if content were to be restricted, you wouldn't see this section at all. So section four would not even be showing on here. If any one of these lessons was drip delayed, you would not see them on the screen here either. So whether it's a drip delay or a date delay, you would not see those lessons on the screen. But in the case of the Wasabi OTO, uh, we can put restricted content on the page and then it will show that restricted content. And I like the idea of this because, okay, so here I got all this restricted content. I got the, the title of the section. And so some kind of cool thing that people would want and all the lessons inside of it would be all cool things that somebody wants. Well, so they're going to click on this and open it up and then they're going to move their mouse into it. And all of a sudden they're going to get denied right there. Mm -hmm. Now, what they got here is pretty clunky. And so I came up with at least six, eight, ten different ways to not only make this look good, but also that we can we can swap this out for buttons, we can swap this out for images. But the other thing we can do is we can just completely do away with this overlay, the dark overlay, and actually show people the lessons themselves, like you would see up here. 
And then when they go to actually click on one of these lessons, then over here on the right hand side, what can pop up is multiple things, including you could have a big, you know, a sales page over here, which essentially could just be a lesson or a section that you insert into the page at that point. Um, so you could have an you could have a, um, you know, a sales sales of some sort here with a link that goes off to an OTO page or an order form page or whatever. Or what I found is you can actually put right in here an order form itself. So somebody could be coming through here, click on it, click on the restricted lesson, and the order form page will pop up right here. So you can say blah, 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 whatever, click here and buy. It could even be an OTO page. And you click on it right there. They purchased it. After purchase, they'd have to log out and log back in in order to have access to it. Um, and then then the, then this would be gone at that point and they would have access to all that content. And so as part of this template, I will include all those hacks and that training to go along with it. Uh, because so awesome. I, think that's, I think that's some pretty cool stuff. It and uh, so we got that there. And now a couple of things before I show you mobile on this is we have deep linking and we have internal linking. So we'll show you the internal linking first because, I mean, see, here's that little check mark because it's, you know, half the time that check mark works and half the time it doesn't work. Um, but so with this internal linking inside of here, we just put in a, a link. Uh, it's a little bit of code in there. And you say, okay, which lesson do I want to link to? And then when somebody clicks on it, there we go. We go straight away over here to lesson 3.3. So from inside of any lesson, you can link to another lesson just with a little snippet of code that you put in to any text or button or anything you want, just like you would put in a link anywhere else. It basically, think of it as a, ha of a hashtag when you're putting in specialty hashtag codes like scroll up or something like that. So that's one of them. Another thing we can do is we can go here and let me just grab this URL so I um let me see and i should have written down an actual number let me do this let me go back here okay well actually let me go here uh let me go here okay and here's another cool little plugin that i built so you can click on this and when you click on it you can see what all of the lesson numbers are inside and each one of these lessons has its own unique identifier so let's say we want to go to this lesson right here from somewhere so i got um i'm sending somebody an email and i said hey go check out lesson number uh, 3.5 that i just released today and so we can come over here and the url then you would send them would be the root url hashtag, and then we would put in that unique identifier for the lesson. And when we do this, and hopefully, oh, okay, it didn't make me log in. Oh, I see what it did. The reason why it showed the picture was because it went through that faux access page in order to get there. So it went through the faux access page and now it came directly into here and it opened up lesson 3.5. And again, Jamie Smith does have code similar to mine, but again, it's similar, but it's, it's totally different. Mm -hmm. And so that was another one there. So that's our deep linking. And then the next one I'm going to show you is, um, well, it's really the last thing here, and that is mobile. So here we are in mobile view. Let me reload the page just to make sure everything is working right. So here we are now in mobile view. And let me just click out of here so it doesn't keep doing that. And... Um, so what we were showing before with the basic membership, I had to put in the content up at the top and then the content down further side by side with the navigation. Well, I didn't want to do that anymore. And so by using flex in this case here, I did not have to duplicate those elements. I just said, okay, let's use flex and, and show, put it where we want it to be is really what it came down to. So here we have our first video and we got our previous next. And every time you click on any lesson, it will scroll you up to where the lesson content area is, or it'll stay at the top if you want to just leave it there. You just got to make one little minor change. But the cool part here is besides the fact, I mean, this lesson will still work just fine. The deep linking will still work just fine. But when you do this, then it opens up the navigation for you. 
So I built in a hamburger bun with the built-in navigation. And then when you click on your lessons, navigation closes back up and you go to that next lesson. So, so I think that was a much cooler, better way of doing it than uh, even the other. I mean, the other way was OK, uh, but the other way, what it did is it put the navigation below the content here. It's above the content, but it's hidden. So, uh-huh. you know, I don't know. People can decide which one's better um, either way. It's, it's funny uh, when you first I'm still like warming up to the idea of the nav below. I'm, I am maybe just be too old school and like, you know what I mean? Always do it above. But yeah, it is an interesting concept to have it below. Having it below is interesting. So do you like this mm-hmm. better or do you like below better? I like above better. Okay. So you like Yeah, below. and I like below better. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, you can't put it in both. That's that's the <laughs> only rule. That's the only rule that I found is with the navigation, it can only be in one place. It, it's like Me, an order, it's like an order form on an order form page type. You can only have one. You can't have two of them. Mm-hmm. To me, it logically makes, I can see the benefit of both ways. I can see the benefit of having it above two and that it's just right there. You don't have to scroll to find it. But I like it below because logically in my mind, it's like, well, I'm going to consume the information and then I'm going to hit my button. I don't want to scroll back up to then hit my button. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think one of the benefits of this is you also have your previous next at the top. You got your logout at the top. So you have all of your controls up here at the top. But also with the with having it like this, you could put other items in here too in this drop down. It wouldn't have to mm-hmm. just be the navigation. Mm-hmm. So if you want other things, you could even put your login button inside of this as you drop it down because essentially all this is <coughs> it's a row. It's it's a row because if you recall when I built this, I built those three rows side by each. So I got mm-hmm. row, 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 and then using flex, I say uh, and, you know, think again of 2.0, how you can use flex and you can either make it, you can make it a row or you can make it a column and you can reverse the columns and the rows. And so all I'm saying here is, is take this row right here and using a little bit of JavaScript, I say, insert this row into the top of this row right here. So that's mm-hmm. how, that's how this, that's how this gets here is by being inserted in there, whether on, on, yeah, see, this is why you always have to reload when you go from laptop to mobile because uh, the code will mess it up. Um, but either way, on either one, what it says is take what is a different row and insert it inside of this row right here on the right hand side. Mm-hmm. So this gets stuck inside of here. And then depending on whether we're on desktop or mobile, we either will show this as a row or we'll show it as a column. And then, like I said, you could reverse the column if need be. So if Susan, if what you wanted was to have the navigation at the bottom, then what we would do is we would just say row reverse, and then it would be down at the bottom. So in fact, we can go into the CSS right here. We can come down to mobile and we say, uh, I mean, so we'd be column reverse or it's a reverse column. I forget now. Well, let's just do it over here. Um, So we could flip flop it. Um, <laughs> that's not the right one whatever I don't need to show you guys that um, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, unless you unless you want to see it you got to decide all right here we go right here <laughs> uh, column uh, let me see here it's a column column reverse okay there we go so now when we click on it now now it's down at the bottom and that's how, again, knowing just a little bit of CSS can uh, give you the ability to do some pretty cool stuff. Now, there is, there's a bunch of JavaScript in here, too, but even, even just something simple like that um, will fix it up for you as well. So is there anything else we want to talk about regarding um, this, what is, in my mind, really a, a basic build, certainly compared to what... Andrea was showing you with uh, that Sabo one and what I'm going to show you here real quickly of a couple other builds that we've done over the years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so just to summarize, right, like the share funnel that you're giving them, everything you've covered up to this point, that's in that that not giving them, but that they can purchase that that would be in that share funnel. And it just significantly enhances your customer experience with the membership area. And it takes 1.0, I think, beyond 
what you would typically get in a Kartra, a Kajabi, a Thinkific, or a Teachable. Yeah, and again, once you come in here and you understand the basics of this, you can make this look pretty much like whatever you want. So you want you want to take this uh, this navigation and stick it all the way over here to the edge. Well, all you got to do is say, okay, well, instead of this row being 1170 pixels, make it 100%. And it will slam it all the way over to the left-hand side. And in fact, we can do that right here, container inner. And we would just say, here, I got a set width of 80%. Let's make this a width of 100%. And now you just come into your row and you take off the padding on the sides of the row. And all of a sudden, you're jammed up against the left-hand side. Um, you see here, take out some of the padding and whatever. There, there's so many layers of padding inside of ClickFunnels. Mm -hmm. You got to go through and find all of them. Um, but as you go through, eventually you'll find all of the, I would just take off some more left padding. And then there's got to be one more place with left padding. And yeah, there's like three or four places that they put in padding on the sides of these things. And whatever it's, okay, it's right there. Yeah. I'll just change it right there. There we go. Now, well, whatever. You get the idea. We should be pretty close to the edge at, at some point here. Um, sure. So that's one way you can make things wider here in this case here, because this was not a singular row. If this was a singular row, you know, you have that blue bar down the middle with the little handle and you could just pull this back and forth because that that adjusts your bootstrap columns then. Um, but mm. in this case here, I made it 40 percent width. So let's say we didn't want this 40%. We can make the left side, we can make this just 30%, not 3%. Make it 30%. That's that's even maybe wider than you need. Make it 25%. And then this side over here, we make 75%. And that way it would give you a bigger area for your videos. So if you're concerned the video isn't big enough, the content area isn't big enough, well, then you shrink down one and you jack up the other. And then, of course, you can always get out of the uh, developer tool and it'll also make it bigger. So um, lots of lots of things you can do once you understand uh, some of the basics and and you get get a little help along the way um, to get you started. But uh, is there anything else you want to discuss or you guys want me to just to jump in and show a couple of our old um, my old builds and uh, I think these are all just mine. Um, <laughs> Do you want me to just do that? No, I think you can jump in. Okay. All right. So, again, the very first membership site I built was probably not long after I got ClickFunnels, which would have been December of 2016 is when I first got ClickFunnels. It was um, June of 2018 when Steve Larson asked me to build all the membership site training for his affiliate outrage program. So somewhere in that year and a half time period, I built out enough membership sites to impress Steve when I was meeting with him in May of 2018. And uh, he had Colton call me a month later and say, dude, uh, build these membership sites for me. And I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. So I shot him like five videos over seven days and it was like five hours long or something like that. And and all those videos are still available if anybody would like to see them because they're actually pretty good. Most of the stuff I actually made up on the fly. I'd say 80% of what I built over that next week, I made up on the fly as I was shooting those videos. So it's, oh, it was uh, the building of something amazing. Hey, just want to do a quick shout out. I don't know why, but my my screen took a while to update. But we have Kane here and Hoseline. So want to do a shout out um, to them. Uh, Kane was asking a really good question. He's another amazing agency uh, funnel builder. And he was saying that he's exclusively in 1.0. So Kane, just to make the connection here is um, we too are still keeping most of our clients in 1.0. Um, unless they're willing to take the risk or we're just doing like a funnel hub, which again is like low risk, right? So um, anyway, what we're going through today is membership 1.0. And especially for yourself, I think the uh, share funnel that Dan will make available is definitely worth checking out. So we can talk more about that, but good to see you guys here. Yeah. And, and what I've been saying is that um, if your economic future stability rests upon a funnel being built in 1.0 or 2.0 build it in 1.0 yeah you know if if you're building for a client who's paying you a whole bunch of money and expects results 
built it in one build it in 1.0 unless they insist on 2.0 and you make it very clear to them what what they may run into mm-hmm. you gotta be really clear with people up front i see a lot of people every day i'm seeing people who just jumped in and now they're in mm-hmm. tears because their clients screaming at them because they can't get their dkim to work yep and as i said to somebody last night that that dkim chick is I mean, she's a trouble. <laughs> you want to stay away from her because she's she's a lot of trouble. So I still I'm still sitting on my offers that I've put together for 2.0 stuff. I'm like, I'm not putting these out there yet. I don't want any clients for 2.0 right now. No, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just <laughs> there's just there, there are issues. And and again, we are all true believers. We all love the vision and the future, and we also still have to uh, create things that work and make money and so that's why for now um you know we're doing everything we can we're building in 2.0 we're learning everything we can but you know we're also being realistic about what's what's going on in there um Mm -hmm. so obviously here are my funnels in 1.0 and i was going to show everybody i have 895 funnels in this account (laughs) so if you think you can't build 895 funnels you can uh most of them (laughs) And I would say that 99% of them are all test funnels of some sort or membership site builds or something else. So I'm going to run through a few of them real quickly here. This year is actually a couple of years ago. Um, when did I do this, Andrew? 2020. Um, mm-hmm. I built out this uh, site. It's known as uh, Membership Ninjas. And I taught people how to build memberships. And what I realized is I was doing it at a little bit too high of a level. And so it was, it was just, it was too much. Um, And so that's why with the new stuff that we're looking at here, it's going to be much more compact and it it just, it's just going to be so much better, but here's a site that we built in here. And so again, this is pretty much a basic click funnels membership site navigation on the left content on the right the only difference is here i put in some extra animations as far as putting in additional headers in here because these are not the section headers these here are the section headers so these are the sections as you click it it will open up each of the lessons below it slowly scrolls down and again as we've seen before in a case like this if we open up a bunch of stuff and we scroll deep down the page here, as we click on something now, it's all going to close up and pull us right back up to the top. So when you have a ton of content, it makes a lot of sense to use that. Again, we got our previous next here, and you see it traverses from one section to the next, closing that up again, really keeps the customer uh, focused on where they are. Here we have the active lesson is is highlighted in that goldish color and when i mouse over it it turns blue and the same thing here with the mousing effect on all of them like that is so that's one of the ways that i like to keep people straight as to where they are going this here is my cf ninja hacks and i will reload this page here just because um oh shoot is it gonna make me okay taking you down yeah okay thank (laughs) you All right, put, hang on a second. Uh, yep. Okay, can you? Okay, put me back up. Hurry up. All hurry right, up. here we go. Here we go. Because I want to do it just so people can see my animation. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you saw it. <laughs> that was built. That was built 100% with CSS. Well, no, I shouldn't say that. There was a little bit of JavaScript in there, but 99% of that was CSS <laughs> used keyframes and animation. So, I just, I, I just love that animation. I had a lot of fun building it, but again, same thing here, but what you're going to notice here, because this is an older site, I don't even have the smooth scrolling on the sections in here. So you Mm -hmm. click on this and it just pops open instead of smooth, smoothly opening up. And otherwise I don't think there's anything. Oh, I know there is one thing that's really important in here. And it's uh, what you see up here at the top is the mark complete button and the mark as favorite. And so that's one of the things we added into this one. And we added into a lot of other sites where you can actually mark a lesson as complete. So I can click on this here. And now it's also going to make a click right down there at the bottom. And I can also mark this as one of my favorites if I want to come back to it. So so I can do that. Now let's go to the previous lesson here and we'll mark this one as complete. 
and I can go out of this area and I can come back into it again. And of course they will stay. And because this is actually stored to an external database, that when the next time somebody comes in, that database will load in their information and they'll be able to see which ones they have completed in the past. And that's not going to be part of a template or anything like that, because to be honest with you, it's just too hard to teach people how to do that. And in order to do this, it's like a couple hundred lines of code. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really something that is a hands-on do it for you project. If somebody's interested in something like this, just uh, get a hold of one of us and we can talk about setting up something like that. And a lot of these other things I'm going to show you here, just because the complexity of it, and there's a project we're working on right now that, and maybe we'll talk about this a little bit at the end, is that, so Andrea comes to me, she goes, oh yeah, it's just like this other one. And I started looking at it and thinking about the logic of how it had to be done. And like, I'm going to have to rewrite 90% of the code. And I did. I had to rewrite almost all of the code in our code base for our main memberships of how we build them just in order to be able to put in like these three extra levels of complexity. So that's, that's the thing is every time. And he did it with deep appreciation and gratitude towards me every step of the way. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, yeah, we just make each other like. better, Dan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so here is my funnel code training. This is where I have a bunch of training on how to do HTML, CSS. There's a lot of training in here in 2.0. There are hundreds of different hacks that I've done over the years in here. I think I counted, yeah, it's well over, it's well over 100 in here, different hacks that I've done, uh, mostly on uh, 1.0 at this point, just because... We haven't had 2.0 around for very long. And so in here, uh, as I was saying before, you can make this go full width because basically what you're looking at here is slightly different, but basically what you're looking at is navigation on the left, content on the right. And then I got a little menu thing here. So you can just uh, get the menu out of the way and make the content even bigger. We have in here our... Um, um, progress tracking. So you can mark it as complete and you can mark it as favorite. And I guess the way I have this one set is uh, if it's not turned on, you will see the toolbar. And if it is turned on, then you don't see the toolbar when you go over it. And then in here also, I even have the searchy widget because I have all the content loaded up into searchy. And if you've never seen searchy, it's pretty cool because you can come in here and searchy is a platform where you would store your videos. And so you come in here and let's say I just wanted to search for HTML videos. I can click on this, or at least I should be able to click on this. What happened? All of a sudden my keyboard stopped working. Don't tell me I broke another keyboard. Oh, no. Uh, I hope not. Oh, I just typed in the HTML. It has to be working. Oh, what the heck? Well, if this was working, <laughs> I wonder why that's not working. Uh, yeah, because I'm logged in to the actual site. Hmm. Okay. If this was actually working, what this would do is this would show me a listing here of every single one of the videos that I have uploaded over here on the left uh, that I talked about CSS. And it would show me the timestamp of where I talked about the CSS. And then I could click on it and actually play the video over here on the right hand side. So it's pretty, uh, it's really a pretty cool thing. That's uh, uh, who is a Stu, McLaren, Stu McLaren's company is that mm -hmm. uh, does this. And then here, um, this is where I was talking about you could build a membership access page that essentially was uh, an opt-in page. So you have somebody, they come land here on this page, and they go through what essentially would be a long-form sales letter kind of thing. I forget what I was doing this for. It's one of Russell's products. 2018, I built this. And um, so when you get done, you think, you know, oh, we're going to just basically opt in here. Well, what you did is when you opt in, you go to get uh, logged into a membership site. And so you get access to all the free content just by coming here and opting into this page. So you can do, you can make a membership page or an opt-in page, or I should say an access page, look like anything you want. And again, with a little bit of CSS, you can pretty much make this element look like anything you want. And if you want to get really crazy, what you can do is you can use some JavaScript and you can capture somebody's 
email, or so you can capture somebody's name and email address only, create a faux password, and just log them in, and they'll never even know that they created an account. But you'll still have captured their name and email address, and that's all that really matters. Next time they come back, they put in their name and their email address or just their email address, and it automatically logs them in. Or, yeah, that would probably be the best way to do it. Um, this one here is one of the very first membership sites I ever built. This was, again, in the summer of 2018. This is a big, a big build, I should say. And baby this is the one Dan. I said earlier. Go ahead. I said baby Dan. <laughs> Less gray hair. Um, not much, but a little. Um, what this was, and it's, you know, it's not populating right right now. And I, I don't think this is the best version I have of this. But essentially how it works is this woman I was building this for was doing uh, like workout plans, meal plans, stuff like that. So every week somebody would get a new new set of plans. So it, like I said, it was like a shopping list, a meal plan and workouts is what they would get for the week. Well, what she wanted was that every week that had to change. So she loaded up like 26 weeks worth of these three different plans. And then what this did is it went through and it said, okay, we want to show this week's stuff. So this week we're going to show, you know, these, these three plans. Next week we're going to show three more, but we're not going to show anything from the week before. And then what it would do is rotate through all 26 of those plans that she had. And so that everybody, as they came in every week, it would be new content. And um, so it was, it was quite a bit of code, but it, uh, it really turned out to be a pretty cool, pretty cool project when we were done. I think she went back into real estate. I don't know if she ever used it or not. <laughs> so <laughs> real estate apparently was easier. Here was one that I started working on with Andrea. We were working on, I don't even know what this thing does anymore, if it still works. It okay, was cool. Yeah, it was the first, it was the first one that we had come across as that was like a, what we now call the experience model of um, coaching program. So it's one where it was actually a brick and mortar during COVID needed to get online fast. They were teaching kids uh, karate. So it was like, how do you shout out to Dallas and, and, and um, David the hearts. So they're amazing. Um, so they, uh, yeah. So it was us exploring how we could have a augmented or a virtual belt uh, system. So the kids were the ninjas and the um, parents were the, um, oh, I'm going to make, I'm going to butcher this, but the sensei um, who helped the master karate instructor. And so they would like hold the things anyway. So it was a, um, it was a year long uh, karate system. And we had like all this embedded, they had to like pass it before they could go on and show proof. And so it was pretty cool actually, but it didn't, you know, COVID ended and they went on to get back to the brick and mortar business. But yeah. And in this case here, so we embedded a quiz in here. And I remember now that when we did this, uh, I forget it was, uh, through Zapier and Google Sheets and all kinds of different stuff, we actually totally automated the system. So they would yeah. go through here, and then if they scored enough points, it would come back in. It would set a tag for them, and it would move them on to the next level. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And, yeah. And so in this case here, though, I mean, all we're using, and I don't know why I um, chose to – Stagger, well, I don't know why it's doing that either, but um, that's okay. I haven't looked at this thing in two years. Um, but the, so in this case here, we're still using just the standard navigation. And we don't use that in all places. Um, in most of the stuff we're building now, we're using the navigation and in a modified way. But um, here we're just showing it. Like I said, I, I think at this point here, I didn't know, know enough to scroll up to the top or something. Um, that's why it's way down, hiding way down here at the bottom. I'm not sure why that is, but it's all nice and purdy colors and stuff. And, and in case you're wondering, you see this background image here with the, the clouds and the red and, and all that. Um, you see that on all my sites. It's because I stole it from Andrea after this project. Totally stole it. <laughs> Absolutely just ripped it off from her. Didn't give her any credit for it or anything. Uh, here's one that. You've more than made I, it up. <laughs> 
here's one that I built for um, a uh, it, was an, it was an MLM. Actually, they sell some sort of supplements or something, and they wanted a challenge model. And so what we did here was when somebody came in, so we were talking earlier about cohorts and day drips and, and all that kind of stuff. And when somebody comes into this thing, they will end up on whatever day they're currently on. So let's say we started on Monday. So Monday would be day one, and then day two, day three, day four is Thursday. If we're day four in the challenge, they're going to come in, and they're going to see the content here for day four. They're not going to see day one. They're going to see day four because it always knows <laughs> day they should be on in the challenge because we have a cohort of people all moving through the challenge together and so this would be good for a challenge model and then over here on the left hand side we can show them other lessons and again here we're just using the standard navigation and we can put in different faq pages pages where they can submit their photos that's what all this was for but yeah so here was just the so this is actually a lesson in uh inside of the i think it's a lesson let me see here's a day let me see here day seven maybe it's not a lesson i thought it was a lesson again it was it's been a while since i looked at this one i thought these had corresponded to the lessons but maybe not um i'd have to look at how i built this again but either way this is what shows so they get in there it's day seven boom this is the content they got to deal with today if they didn't do day six oh too bad they don't get day six. They got to come in here every day. That's the way this was set up, and that's the way they wanted it set up. So obviously, it can be slightly modified. But what you saw up to this point here, we've been using the standard navigation all along. Well, on this one here, there's no standard navigation on this page at all. I actually built this. This was one of the more early versions of my quick start or of my CF Ninja hacks, actually. And how you navigate through these lessons is... This here is actually the sections on the page. And so as you navigate through the sections, you can click on these images. You see the bar changes each time we click on these things. And we can just go all the way up 6 through 10. And then also you can come over here and click on these. And when you do that, it'll open up a video pop-up for you. Or you can just play this image here. And every time you click on this image, this video will change out the sidebar changes out and again you can click on that opens up the video for you to be able to watch so again another way you could build a membership site right there then this one here this was my take on the original uh, affiliate outrage or not affiliate outrage affiliate boot camp that russell did way back when and the way they had it set up is they had this image along the side and russell as you progress down through your days the image would change as Russell was climbing down the side of the cliff here, <laughs> That's so crazy. The here at the bottom to his Ferrari. Well, I looked at this and I said, okay, well, I want to do something similar. So again, this is an image. And as I click on the image, you're going to see over here on the right hand side. You haven't shown this one very much, Dan. Out. This is great. You what? you what? I said, you haven't shown this one very much. This is great. Yeah. Well, the, the next one you'll have definitely seen before. So, yeah, so you click on this here and the content will change out as we go along. And then, again, I was just playing in here. Well, I guess, is there? Yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah, if you can. So as you click on these images, then that'll change that stuff. And like I said, it's been a while since I, I even looked at this one. So I'm not even quite sure what it all does. And then down here, I guess is the same thing down here. Uh, but oh yeah, I think with some of these here, let me see here. Yeah, yeah. So we can we can swap out the well, maybe not. We should be able to swap out the content. I thought. Well, let me go back up top here, and now I hear my dog starting to bark outside. So <laughs> hopefully they won't be a problem. Um, you're outside terrorizing something. Let me see here. If I click on this, oh there we go. All right. So as you click on this now within each one of the lessons, there we go then we can change our content based upon that as well, all within a lesson itself. So there's a lot of things you can do where we can, you can click on something and we could have, you know, all kinds of information appear on the screen. You could have a, 
whole new journey starting on the screen by clicking on one image and have like another, you know, the next journey comes sliding onto the page and it'd be animated and, and the whole thing. Um, so, but then this one here I built for the guys who run the Kidpreneurs book I series. I love this one. Yeah, this one turned out great and we never did use it because partly he just wanted like your standard clunky old uh, 1.0 membership and I used the wrong image over here on the left. It was from the wrong book. But I could have. Oh, <laughs> um, but yeah, so this image over here on the left is clickable. So if I click on introduction, you're going to see everything over here on the right change. So we got our table of contents. We got our introduction. We got our chapter one. And then after that, I didn't, uh, you know, it changes. You can see at the top, the numbers changing up here. But I didn't put in a lot of the rest of the content. But uh, again, here then we have, so we got our introduction section right here. And then we got our Emma and Jack plan a business, which is this content here. But then we got our next bit, uh, our next lesson and our next lesson after that. And then we also have a little pagination here so we can go from chapter to chapter. And so I guess that was welcome. And here's introduction. Is there a welcome up here? But either, either way, we can do pagination here as well and go from one chapter to the next as we go through there. So again, it's not uh, it's, you're not limited to having to have the navigation element displaying on the page um, as long as you can figure out some other way to change out the, uh, the lessons. And, and like I said, that's why with some of this higher level stuff, the, the logic behind it is not as easy as as it's not as easy just giving you a template is what it really comes down to um and then here is what is the clone of funnel flex that i did it turns out that funnel flex when click funnels built it they actually built it in wordpress and i saw that and i said well why can't i just build that in click funnels and so i did and so when you clicked on that, we now come into our course. We can start our course and now we can go through our course. We got breadcrumbs in here and the whole thing. And so if you go into Funnel Flix, depending on which one you click on and where it takes you to, you will see a lot of stuff that is very similar to what I'm showing you right here. And they all end up, the ones that don't take you to another membership area will all end up right here in this type of a page with a couple of videos essentially lined up on top of each other like this. And so um, that was a lot of fun to build. And we've built others similar to this since. I, we may uh, show you another one here. Um, and then here, um, this basically the same kind of thing is you got a couple of different uh, uh, lessons or courses, I should say, lined up here. And as you click on one, it scrolls you down to the bottom. Let me see the Kennedy ones I have loaded up properly. And so in this case here, this is a single lesson, really. And we got, so then be a Kennedy video over here and some, some words on the left. But on this one here, same thing. If we click on it, brings it down here. And now we're back using the actual navigation, just this part of the navigation that we needed. And we're showing now the lessons. And again, this should swap out. Yeah, it'll swap out to different ones as I click through here and give us different lessons. And then what was the very last one I had? Okay, here's, this one is last for a reason because this is what started what has become now what everybody wants. And we originally referred to this as Ascension. I built it for Debbie, a woman who lives down in Australia. And um, it has now become known as our dashboard model or even our hub and track model, depending on how how far we go with it. And it's it's pretty simple, the concept behind it. And like I said, this was this was like one of the original mock-ups of it um, is as you come in here, you've got different lessons. And as you click on the, I'm sorry, different courses. So as I click on these different courses at the top, it's going to populate different content along the left-hand side. And so as you see, it's changing out. I made things different color. Um, so again, using a little CSS, we're just modifying the colors on the, on the section headers and the lessons. And, but you see here, the, the content is swapping out. Now the next phase in this, and I should have found one for that next phase, is we created a singular page right here in the middle 
where the courses themselves lived. And then as we clicked on the course, then that course page would slide off and the lessons and the navigation would slide on. And that's really where we're going to now leave it off to Andrea to show us whatever she pulled up, because I'm not sure if she pulled up. Which which one did you pull up, Andrea? Sabo or P2P? I have both. <laughs> yeah, I have well, both. there we go. We're going to get both of them then. <laughs> so I will stop sharing, or Susan can take me down. I'll take you down. Okay. Um, all right. Here we go. So, um, what's that? I said Susan took oh, her sock down. Thank you. I did. I had to switch out my gum. <laughs> okay, cool. So I'll go ahead and log in. So you guys saw this before, but let's go through the full thing. So just like Dan said, so, and remember, there are six different experience models. So this is a, um, it's a, a coaching program, um, but it is essentially a class model um and but it's a cohort and we control the pace that they go because we want to align it with the coaching program meetings so um this is a wonderful gentleman named sabo he specializes he did like a couple exits in silicon valley which if you don't know what that is that's really impressive <laughs> that's like the billions and amazingness um and so he now is on a different path helping overachievers be able to introduce meditation um, and not do the same overachieving path towards success, but find a different path that's a little bit more with grace and um, the powers that be, right? Uh, and so this is his program. It is a lead gen technique and a coaching program support. So he runs a best life ever challenge. So this is him. Um, now, obviously, I have access to everything. But if I came in as a lead gen, I would only have access to this. And I would see these as potential upsells, which is awesome. So I have the challenge here where it just takes me and I go day by day and it's super simple. And we have the meditations in the morning and the journal activity and it's just super slick, right? Amazing. Um, but then let's say I love what he does and I want to get in his coaching program. Well, now this is date released based on the coaching program. So it's a 16 week, co week coaching program. And you can see that it jumped me right to the end because we're in the final week. Versus if I just start, then I would jump right to the beginning. And there's some code to make sure that I start, even though all three of these are released together, it jumps me right to the place where I want them to focus. And you can see here that it's, um, you know, the actions are here and I do, I do the steps and we keep going along our merry way. And because it's cohort, I'm only seeing this one cohort. He's running two consecutive cohorts. So one cohort is in gratitude and the next cohort, the one I'm in, is in manifestation. And so it allows me to be able to control multiple cohorts. And one thing that Andrea said there about um, if somebody is just going into the very first section and they land on choose to be a mentor, the reason why we send them there, it's totally on purpose because we want them, every time they log in, just like with the challenge model, when they log in here, we want them to be focused on that singular thing. We want them to be focused on that day. And so if it's day one, they will be dropped into choose to be a mirror, even though the other two will be open, but everything from mirror fundamentals down won't show on the page. It won't even be there. So they don't have the ability to have a squirrel and go start chasing after something else and clicking around and finding things. They're focused on exactly, boom, this is what you're seeing as you go through it. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And then again, I have, you know, the free resources that you can see this looks different. So the navigation isn't what is in the main program, but it allows us to have a little bit different of experience inside of these places where it's just free content, right? And for lead gen or an alumni, um, this is where uh, all of them would be showing. I'm not an alumni. I don't have that. I'm just an admin and that's why I see this. Um, but then I would go in and like, if I go to the community, then I see all of his community stuff too. So, so how this works then is we can be running multiple cohorts simultaneously. And so you can be running three, four, five cohorts simultaneously. And when each one of them gets done with their cohorts, they are seamlessly all moved into the alumni. Because at that point, everything is absolutely open and they get through that last day of their cohort. The next time they come in here, they're going to go put be put into the alumni, but they're not going to know any difference because... 
they just got moved over there um, mm -hmm. without without having to do anything. And they're still seeing all the same content they had seen before that. Yep. The other one, which is our the most fancy high end build. Is well, let's go back to the other one first, because the one thing that I want everybody to really see on this here is. You know, we're looking, we're talking here about cohorts, but this could be four, five, six different courses that you have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so people can log in here. You can you can send everybody you got in here. And based upon a little bit of code that we use, those boxes, go back to the boxes, go back to the dashboard page. You will see or not see these images here based upon the courses that you have purchased. If you have, and, and we can use the Wasabi OTO at this point too. So we can say, okay, so box number one, they did buy that. Box number two, they didn't. So maybe we make that a different image. We put a lock on there. We say, you don't have access or get access by clicking here. And they can click on it and it'll take them off to a sales page somewhere. Mm -hmm. So not only can we do multiple cohorts simultaneously, we can do multiple courses in here simultaneously. And so it's mm -hmm. single login with multiple courses. Now, the next one Andrea is going to show you puts this on steroids because <laughs> in this one here, we actually built out a dashboard like you saw on that last one. But then we also added another eight additional external courses to it, each one of which, each one of these nine courses now could have multiple courses inside of them and they do and they can have multiple cohorts and alumni inside of them and they do yep and so this is the current um and i can light it up along the way so right now and that's exactly where they're at so it dropped me right where they're at we started tracks this week and so everybody came in and picked their track um and then this is tied into an Airtable database so we can see all of that data and we can light it up all along the way. We can see our badges. So I'm lighting what up. What does light it up mean, mean, Andrea? Ooh, good question. Let me go to uh, my credit track. Right? I don't think I've lit everything. I mean, we're going to talk about it. Let's show it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, so there lit, are... light it up actually came from Becca, who was on the show last week. Um, so they're in, you know, cinematography, moving from cinematography, you know, to, to filmmakers. And so... Um, light it up literally came from like, how do we help them make progress? That's like not as big of a badge, but they need to like see they're making progress. And so like lights, like lights on a, you know, on a film, like how they have the bulbs that light up, you know, we're like, mm -hmm. oh, well maybe we could have like little mini light ups, right? Their light it up is crazy because he's a graphic designer and it was insane, but literally it came from light it up and it became a concept that actually rolled out to the rest of our customer journeys where, this is not badge worthy. It's not a big milestone, but it's an important celebration moment. And so let's do something that gives them the feedback that they just did something really important. Right. And so in here, for instance, she does credit. Um, and I might be caught up on this one too. Dang, I can go into the database if I need to. Um, but so this is the program overview. Let's see. I think just explaining it. So like on this one, we have the word credit up there on the top mm -hmm. and now on the bottom. And mm -hmm. as they complete something and light it up, it's filling in the letters. Here we go. Oh no, I already did it. Oh, yeah. So done. like I do it and this one is, oh damn. <laughs> of course yeah. the bug pops up. Yeah, that's um, broken. Uh, it's only supposed to be one on that page. Uh, so, yeah. so yeah, what it comes down to is when you click on that, okay, we got to light it up here and we got a badge. That's good. We can show yes. both of them here. So now when she clicks on the light it up, what's going to happen is you see that there, the pop-up comes yeah. in and you saw now it went from just C and R being in gold to now C R E being in gold. And this, this is all about making money, uh, is what, uh, all these courses are about here. So we used a lot of gold mm -hmm. in them. And so now every time that person comes in, they're going to see the CRE uh, on the top left. They're going to see it on the badge page. They're going to see it on a bunch of other things. Actually, Andrea, go back to where you were. I'll just let's just go the shortcut unless you really want to. No go way. I'm going to do, do it. Badge. OK, she's going to do it the, the, that way. So what she's doing right now, she's applying for her badge. So apparently she learned a bunch of stuff in the first few lessons. Now she's applying for a badge. <laughs> and now, OK, pump up the volume. We want to hear this thing. Yes, I hear it. Yes, hurry up. No. 
Oh, sad. It, it only lasts like five seconds. So either way, you saw there um, that so they go out to the type form, they fill it out, they come back. When they come back, the badges, I mean, the fireworks go off. You can turn on the sound if you want. I figured I'd turn that off in case people are, you know, at, at work or in the bathroom or wherever they don't want it going off. And um, then you come to your badge page here and you see which badge you just earned. And then you got a button you can click on and you can say, let's let's go to the next one. Let's let's get to it and it'll take you to the next lesson unless you don't have any lessons left. And then then it won't take you there. I don't know. Did this one take you there or not? No, it didn't. It's another little bug on this one, but it was uh, Okay. Um, and, so then and we will give a shout out to Nicole because she does all the graphics yes. on these and they turned out great on, on this one. Uh, but yes. what you saw here was, again, we started in one membership area and then Andrea clicked on the credit that actually seamlessly took us into a completely different membership area built inside of ClickFunnels. And you don't even know that you went to a different membership area. Mm -hmm. And then this is an example of like, this one's not open to me yet. Yeah. But if you click on the 21 day jump start, that will take us just to the main membership area mm -hmm. built into here. And again, you got the same thing with the courses, the sliders for that and the menu and all those kind of things. And so, Oh, and I don't even think we mentioned here the ability to be able to answer questions, have check marks so that people can put in their answers. And in this case here, don't you have a bunch of coaches or something working and we actually. Do. You know, at yeah, this? so that they can tell their coaches what they need. So here it's like, hey, what's the best way to give you feedback? And so then this goes to a Airtable dashboard that the coaches can see and know how to best help their people. Yeah. Pretty so cool. Awesome. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. And so that is, oh, one other thing too, because uh, this is going to be a geek mod. So in his particular course, he actually has uh, two, he has lessons, but then he also has a bunch of audio files that are daily uh, mindset things. And so here we have the normal, you know, them going through the course. But then what we also have is an offer mastery where this is just the daily mindset meditation that somebody could come in. This is a Vimeo player. So now they can come in or on their mobile, they have it right there. And so they do their one day of um, mindset and then they can um, go and reflect on it in journal. But it's there in a player so that they can easily access on mobile and use it as a player. And this is just a Vimeo feed. So all these videos are in Vimeo in a collection, and this automatically gets pumped in. Cool. Oh, and I guess the one thing we never did um, look at on these, and hopefully, cross your fingers, hopefully it'll work, uh, go go into mobile. Uh, we want to see if it works. Uh, or go, go back to the main page first, and then are you uh, logged in incognito? Yeah. Okay. Not that it would matter. It's just uh, every time I go into their account and work on it, I'm always incognito. So I've never tested when you click on the go back to the uh, go back to the access um, or go back to the main hub button. I've never tested it not incognito to see if it keeps you logged in or not. Because mm. I'm never sure if uh, if it uh, yeah you should be able to just go mobile there. If you go up to the top and where it says iPhone SE, click on that and go to responsive. Okay, and now click on um, and the top top line where there's there's the bar with the squares on it. Click on one of the more click on there should be one that says 780, I think. Should be the next one. There you go. All right, so there there it is. And reload the page now because it may not have loaded properly. Because you always got to make sure, because especially with these, there's a lot of code in there for desktop versus mobile. And so here then um, you just land on this first page and you see all the images. And then you just pick which one of the courses you want to go into straight away from here. And we really should do some of those sizes aren't matching up. We should probably, uh, the two at the top are smaller. Mm-hmm. And so then when you do that, now what it did is it went from one membership site to the other membership site and it logged you in 
without having to put in a new email address or anything else. And now you can just go straight away into the training in here. And that's a little bit too much gold in there. That is, yeah. <laughs> we are still working on this one here. Um, there, uh, yeah, we need some background on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice though. So they can come in they can get started with the app and get on their way. Susan helped program this one actually. And see their badges. Yeah, so there's few, still a few little bugs in there, but we're not totally completed mm -hmm. with this one yet. And then we may, at some point in the future, um, the original plan was is to build like another seven, eight, or ten more tracks yeah. on top of what we already have in here. And again, yeah. they'll all be working straight off of a singular login page. Yep. Magic. Crazy. Yeah. So that's awesome. it. I think we yeah. have uh, gone through about everything we can on, on 1.0 mm -hmm. that we've built up at this point. And, yeah. But like I said, I, I honestly think there's some journey stuff, uh, choose your own journey stuff that we have not even scratched the surface on. Oh, 100%. Uh, what we, yeah. Uh, what we could do and what we could build. Um, yeah. I showed you the other day, Andrea, that that one uh, site that somebody asked if I could build it in 2.0. And at first, yeah. my immediate reaction was, God, no, I, there, no way. And after I thought about it, I was like, yeah, I can do that. Of course you did. <laughs> of yeah. course you did. Right. Well, the more I looked at it, I was just like, yeah, um, it could be built in 2.0. I mean, it, it was awesome. just all full of graphics and everything. And I was just, and I realized, yeah, it can be done. And so um, basically, <clears throat> Whatever somebody wants, uh, throw it at us, and uh, worst we can say is no. Yeah. And, but what you'll learn is Andrea never says no to anybody, and then she promises, <laughs> and then she comes to me and says, um, "Oh, hey Dan, you could build this, right?" And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> and yet, you can't you're like gonna figure it out? Of the time, but we do. But, yeah. Um, yeah. I was gonna say I I had some notes here, but uh, so. Yeah, we we had that one, the one that we're working on right now. We're we're not ready to show anybody yet. But um, I was looking at it the other day, and it's just like, okay, most standard membership sites, whether it's one point or or two point oh, you start off, you got obviously you got your membership, then you got the sections, and then you got the lessons. Okay. Well, I started looking at this one here, and we have a membership. Then inside of the membership, we had the offers, which is what would show up on the dashboard page. Then from within the offers, we had to look at the products that were in each of the offers and then each mm -hmm. of those products had multiple courses inside of the product which mm -hmm. then you had inside of the courses of course you had your sections and then you had your lessons <laughs> on top of it so mm -hmm. we went from three to six levels that we <laughs> had to be able to show on the screen simultaneously basically easy uh, <laughs> yeah, simple. yeah, it only took me like four days to figure out how to rewrite just this much of the code. Uh, but I got it done last night, and so I was pretty happy about that. So Yay. we're ready, ready to move forward on that one, too. Yeah, so yeah. awesome. That's, that's, what we, that's what we do. Complicated and around. amazing all at the same time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, awesome. kids. Well, that's okay. all I've got today. Okay. Yep. So let's wrap it yeah. up. Um, all right, so this will live in the CF 2.0 Geek Out group through the weekend Monday. up until Monday. Same with 2.0. You guys are actually getting a bonus of two, having the memberships 2.0 Geek Camp in here longer because I'm just going to take them both down Monday morning. Um, yeah. So if you didn't watch that one and you want to go learn 2.0 stuff, Dan and I fumbled our way through the technical errors we were reaching. By the way, my oh, yeah. workspace that wasn't loading properly is still not loading properly. So I need to go submit a support ticket on that one. <laughs> um, so yeah, up till Monday and then they will be in Geek Out Academy. If you are not part of Geek Out Academy, go to geekoutacademy.com. That is where you can go and join. That is where we put all of these geek camps. We do them one a week. They're always on a different topic. They're mostly trying to uh, explore and learn ClickFunnels 2.0. Mm -hmm. um, and we have them all planned out for the rest of the year. What's our next one, actually? Let's see. Let's, uh, well, let's go to our events page. 
And then um, also, oh, Susan and I were also talking about it. And our original plan was to make a set of highly structured um, lessons out of the Geek Camps. That's proving not to be true because of all the technical issues that we're hitting. So what we're going to do instead is that the ones that are in there, we're actually going to index them based on the problems experienced. So for anybody who is having those problems, you can actually see real time how to navigate around those problems. Um, and then we will do another set of very structured way of building it that's much easier to follow and a better customer experience. And so that's the that's the current game plan. Awesome. And then one okay. last thing I would say is if um, if you're interested in the template we were talking about or if you're interested yes. in a custom build, just make sure you reach out to any one of us and we'll start the conversation. And if you reach out to me, I'll just tell you to go talk to Andrea anyway. So um, if you're out, <laughs> you can talk to Andrea. Because the one thing that she did not go through is how she plans the entirety of the membership experience for somebody. That was part of the presentation we didn't even go through today, which would take another hour. Because I mean, how many, realistically, how many hours do you spend working with somebody prior to ever even, uh, ever, ever even basically giving it to me to build? how many hours are involved and, and there's even more after I start building it, but how many hours total do you normally work with somebody for the pure, the pennies, the pennies that we charge for this? Um, probably around 10 to 15, depending on the level of complexity. Um, yeah. yeah so. Well, like I said, this one here is six levels of complexity and uh, you, you got to, you got to see just the, the spreadsheets of us just trying to figure out, how do we take the was it 14 different products that this guy had which was like 36 different no it was 14 different offers with like 36 different products and how yeah. to turn this all into one membership site and so it got to be yeah. <laughs> it's very interesting <laughs> and and most of that is andrea working with the customer and just uh, smacking them upside the head and getting it to work we're the, the loving them and where they're at and helping to extract their <laughs> I think That's Susan like, needs to let her cows out or something. I know. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> That's my dog. She's yawning because she needs attention. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, before we sign off, though, let me just share. This is our broken. See, like, just nothing in that workspace is displaying properly. This is not how this page is supposed to look. But at least the information is still here, so you can come check it out. Tomorrow we're back for Geek Out Live. And uh, these, by the way, these are showing in my time zone. So if you want to see the times in your time zone, come to the actual link. I put it into the comments. Um, but our next Geek Camp is ClickFunnels 2.0 plus Active Campaign CRM. Basically, how would we use both of those together? Why do we like Active Campaign as a CRM right now and all those things? So that'll Yay. be next week on the 8th. And just let everybody know, I will not be on that show. <laughs> I know nothing about Active Campaign. You're, you've been, so you'll, you've been you'll have a reprieve. Yeah. You'll have a reprieve from me that week. Yeah. We've no, loved having Dan on Dan with us this week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we appreciate it. And especially just helping us to be able to push the envelope. So very much appreciate you. Yes. Yeah, we would not be able to do it without you. That's yeah. for so sure. True. Well, I couldn't okay. do it either, so... <laughs> Symbiotic. All right. So okay. let's wrap this up. Let's, let's go to lunch. Now, now that we're ending, we have like viewers. So thank you for coming and joining Yay! us. All of you missed it from the beginning. So go back and watch the replay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Yeah. We'll see you guys tomorrow for our live and we'll touch base then. Geekoutacademy.com. Awesome. <laughs> Bye.